Hi guys, welcome. Uh, so today I'm gonna be working on some more tool grid and I, I just, I was doing this anyway. I thought I might as well turn the camera on, could talk a little bit. So for those of you that maybe don't know or are new to the channel, um, I've done some tool grid episodes before, um, this wrench drawer and the socket drawer up here. Um, I have some drawers that are done with Kaizen foam, like this. Um, I also have some drawers that have Sonic tools and Sonic tools come in their own foam like these. Um, if you look at like a medium drawer, this would be a, a Sonic medium insert. It's a pretty good fit with a Harbor Freight uh, toolbox. The, it's like a 22 inch wide drawer. So today I'm gonna be working on this one. Um, and the reason for that, so I like the Kaizen foam. It works well for um, making good use of space. It's not incredibly expensive. A sheet of Kaizen foam is about 40, 50 bucks and you can get two drawers out of it. Uh, tool grid is about four times more expensive than that. Um, so when I started off, I had all snap-on tools, snap-on screwdrivers. I had a set of uh, long handled ones. There was eight in that set. And then I had all of the sm shorter instinct screwdrivers and then some ratcheting ones like this guy here and this T-handle. Um, then I ordered some wear screwdrivers, really liked them, switched to Vera screwdrivers. And then I have some other stuff that I've picked up now that are not in the drawer. So, I have, um, this is another snap-on ratcheting screwdriver. I've had that for years, uh, but I have a couple Tekton nut drivers. There are five of these. Um, I have a Hazet handle. I have uh, this bit set, which is Hazet. Um, I have a Wea bit set that I was playing around with. It's this guy. Um, I have a Vera um, T-handled wrench. Um, those are the rest of the nut drivers. And I also have these uh, Torx, like tiny Torx, precision Torx, whatever you want to call them. All right, so we're going to start by setting up our tool grid. Um, I have a couple of the full sheets. They don't make these anymore, but I have uh, a couple left. So these are what we're going to be using to do this. Um, so to start off, you want to uh, measure the drawer and cut the sheet. Now, in my case, these sheets are 24 by 26. The drawers are 22 wide by 19 deep. So generally what I'll do is, um, it's 19 and three quarter. So generally what I'll do is I'll cut the 22, the, the 24 down to 22, and then I'll cut the 26 down to 19. That way the piece that I get left over is seven inches deep by um, the whole width of the drawer. And that actually works well for something like this. If you wanted to put tool grid in front of um, these pry bars, which I might actually do that too because uh, I can get both of those out of the same sheet. Um, these sheets are, it's like 75 bucks for a two pack. For, um, if you're able to find them, like I said, they don't make them anymore. Um, now they make them in uh, small squares that interlock together. Um, and the squares work well, they're just more expensive. So we're looking at uh, 22 and an eighth. We wanna be a little undersized. So we're gonna take this. Um, like I said, this is supposed to be 24 by 26. It's technically 25 by 23 and a half. We cut these with a regular razor knife. So we're gonna go to uh, 22 and an eighth. The way you cut one of these is pretty simple. I take a straight edge and we line it up with where we want our cut to be. Um, I'm going to go and score this with a knife. And then we can remove the straight edge and just stay in that groove that we've created. And what you'll find is after a couple passes, your knife kind of starts to plunge through it. Kind of like when you're cutting drywall. So you can 
bend this edge back like that. Then you can take your knife and you can cut the back side. Like that. So now we have our width and our depth is 19 and a half. Cut that down. So like I mentioned, now we have this piece here and we could actually use it like right there, be a good spot. So I'll probably cut this one down and put that there. So we'll just leave this in that drawer for now. We'll take our tools out of the drawer. The nice thing about tool grid is how modular it is that you can actually um, swap out and change tools and layouts over time. So if you're like me and you're kind of always looking for new tools, sometimes you swap something out, you sell something old, you move on. Um, this allows you to adjust your drawers as time goes on. Now, if you're not familiar with tool grid, uh, it is a grid with a bunch of holes in it, like you can see, and they make these different uh, fittings that hold your tools in, or well, really whatever you want to put in them. So like this basket is a tool grid basket. There are pins that sit in a, into a place and it doesn't slide around and there are screw holes and you screw everything in with these Torx screws. There are a couple different types of uh, tool holders. There's this that they call like a universal holder. Um, that I don't think will work for these shorter drawers. No, this needs to be in a deeper drawer. So we won't be using those today. There are these cams, which are tall. There are smaller cams, which are these guys. Um, there's a universal tool holder like this that's smaller. Um, I have a couple of those. Here. So this can hold a handle. They're good for things like pliers, like these. Um, most of what we're going to be using are tool handle holders and tool tip holders, which are these two, uh, TGH 11 and TGH 10. And they look like this. Let's start laying this out and figuring out where we want things to be. Um, I found that it's easiest to just kind of dump some of these things into the bucket here and start positioning your tools and kind of go from there. I haven't been recording much lately. One, the weather's just been pretty poor, lots of rain. Um, seems like it rains all weekend and then it's nice all week, which is fun. And then separately, we bought our house, the house that we're in, um, which was kind of unexpected. Uh, we've been Renting it for a number of years, have a really good relationship with the landlords, had a really good price uh, that we were paying for rent, and um, we were just getting a lot of house for the money. And like everything else, it appreciated in value to the point that they decided that they wanted to sell it. And uh, we basically had a choice of buy the house or move out. So we opted to buy the house which is a decision I'm happy that we made. Um, but from a cash flow perspective, uh, until we can refinance the house, because the rates just suck right now, um, a little, little house poor for a bit. And I recognize that I say that while owning four cars. So, the perspective is a little off, but compared to what I used to have to invest in the channel, um, I have a lot less right now. So I haven't been spending as much time because I haven't had as much time. And I've also been working on a lot of things around the house, painting this, renovating that. I redid our laundry room and a couple other things. And that's been fun time consuming, um, but those are good tasks to do, you know, on days when it's raining and stuff, which we've had, like I said, a lot of lately. So 
I've been working through that. I'm gonna work on the Kosh Kemi blue line. So they're, um, I guess it would be like their DIY line of products. So I think that that'll be fun. I've got a couple other tools that are on their way that I'll be talking about as well. Um, and I might do some DIY household videos. I, um, I don't want to turn off viewers by doing that, but I do want to create content. And my thought is that you guys might be interested in some of that as well. So let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on that. Should I, you know, if I'm replacing a fan inside my laundry room, should I do a video on that? If I'm swapping out um, some can lights for Cree retrofits, should I do a video on that? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I'll have to do some low voltage cabling here and there, so I'll probably record some of that. Um, I'm not a C7 contractor, but I work for an IT company and that's just something that we end up having to do quite a bit. Um, so I'll probably record some of that content as well. Um, for those of you that might be interested in doing networking stuff around your house, there will still be a lot of garage content. I, um, I actually had this plan this year to buy and build a 1960s mini um, and do a VTEC conversion, which has been kind of done. Mighty Car Mods years ago did it, but truthfully, the, the resources that exist for that conversion now didn't exist then. So I think the video series would be pretty different from what they did years ago. Kind of always been a Honda guy. My first car was a Prelude. Um, I've had three Preludes, two Civics, an Accord. I currently have a Passport. You know, so Honda has always held a place in my heart. They just, um, they don't currently make anything that I find exciting. Um, you know, they are by design, uh, an economical brand, right? That's what they do. Economy is what they do. Even my passport. And, you know, I, I recognize the fact that I'm spoiled because I've had multi, you know, Mercedes and minis and BMW and, you know, other, other cars. Like I get in my Honda and it's like, I don't know. It's more of a tool, less of a, a car that I'm excited to drive, which is fine. I mean, everybody needs a daily. And for somebody like me who struggles when their car isn't clean, it is actually kind of nice to have something that you maybe don't care about as much. Um, so that's been useful. But when the, uh, you know, that's a lease. When the lease is up, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to be buying it. We're going to return it and just walk away. Um, it was actually supposed to be gone. The original plan was that when the green mini was ordered, we were going to trade the passport on the green mini when it arrived. But that all happened during COVID and the passport depreciated by a fair amount of money while the mini was being built. So we ended up with this decision, do we, do we take delivery of the Mini or do we not? It was a tough decision. We opted to, to keep our place and get the Mini that we had ordered. You know, it is a 2024, it is the last of the series. They no longer make the Clubman. The last ones have been made. 
had we decided to not take delivery of it, I mean, sure, we would have been able to buy one from somebody else in the used car market. Maybe we would have been able to find a build similar to the one that we did, but you know, th this was an opportunity for us to build exactly what we wanted, get exactly what we wanted, go through the ordering process, the shipping process, follow it on the boat, you know, do the whole thing, which I had never done before. So that was actually a lot of fun. I enjoyed that experience. We ended up not only not trading the passport, but also getting the mini two months early. So in my mind, the plan for this year was sell the 2016 mini John Cooper works buy a 1960s mini and do a Honda conversion on that throughout the year. And then at the end of the year, trade in the passport when the lease was up and from there figure out what's next. And ideally that would be a Porsche, uh, probably a Cayman. So I, I don't think that I want to start off with a 911. I think that I want my first Porsche to be a Cayman. The mini would have created a bunch of project content. So that would have been good for the year. And then it would have allowed me to enjoy the Porsche because the Porsche isn't going to create a lot of content in my mind. It's, um, you know, those cars are pretty good right from the factory. So like, you know, it's, there isn't a lot to improve on. So then I started thinking about, well, maybe I should get an older Porsche instead and, you know, buy a, an older Cayman or an older Boxster or an older 911 even, and do um, some stuff on that, put a sound system in it, clean it up, you know, live with it, see if, if I actually, you know, want a Porsche in my life, because I've never had one, never driven one. Well, I've driven a handful, but they were years and years and years and years and years ago, so it's not quite the same. It's kind of where I'm at right now. Trying to figure out what this next year is going to look like and uh, what my next car is going to be and how to buy it without ending up getting divorced. If you're a car guy, you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, I feel like I've just rambled for an hour. All right, well, I need a little bit more tool grid, so I'm gonna wait for them to come in and then I'll finish this drawer. For you, that'll be just a minute. So here we have the finished product. As you can see, it's a mix mash of a bunch of different brands and different lines of things. I'll kind of talk through what I kept and why. Um, and, and really, I was able to take my existing drawer to add the nut drivers to it to add some of these sets to it that I didn't previously have in there to put a place for these small um, torques. I only removed um, two screwdrivers. One is this, it's snap on, it's broken. So I have to get that swapped out and I likely won't keep it because I actually like this one a lot better. Um, and the other is this, which is a T handled snap on, um, which again, um, works just fine but I picked up this uh, Wera and I like the Wera better. So what do I have here? Um, these are uh, long snap-on screwdrivers, number two Phillips flathead, 732nd flathead. Um, these are almost two feet long. They're like an 18 inch metal plus a four or five inch handle. And they're just, um, they're much longer than anything that Wera makes. If Wera made a size that was similar to that, I would buy them and I would um, sell these off. Um, nothing against the snap-on, they actually work just fine, but I would prefer a matching set. They just wear it doesn't make anything that long. Um, I use these for certain things. It's rare, but occasionally I've needed them to be this long. Um, I often use them for fishing wires through firewalls, actually. Um, so here are the wearer screwdrivers, Phillips and Flathead, large, number three, number two size, number one size, uh, three stubbies, Phillips, um, some other small flatheads. Over here, these are um, 
tacked in nut drivers, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Um, I could take those or leave them. You know, nut drivers are one of those things that you use occasionally. They're great for, um, you know, hose clamps and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, realistically, this with an adapter and a, you know, short socket could very easily be one of these. So I have T40 down to T10. Um, I don't use those as much as I use the T handles, but it is nice to have them. And then these are micro Torx, so I have it, you know, all the way down to, I think there's a T4 in here. It's like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, this has that set, came with this handle, so it's got a little ratchet as well as the handle. It's just kind of a nice, like, grab and go, stick in your bag, stick in your pocket kind of thing to go somewhere to do a job. Um, this is a very similar WIA thing that I just kind of picked up to play around with WIA tools. Honestly, those I could take or leave as well. So I could really pare this drawer down if I wanted to, but it's a full drawer. Maybe at one point I'll pick something else up new and uh, I'll want to swap some things around. But for now, I like how it turned out. Next for tool grid, I'm going to do this drawer and I'm going to um, work on this drawer. These are already tool grid bins. They're just not gridded currently. So I'll do this and I'll put them in a grid and I'll, um, you know, put these knives and stuff. It just gives me an opportunity to go through them. I have an empty drawer here. This one's also a mess. Um, this is all my spare parts. It appears as though I picked up like a drawer and a half by doing tool grid so far. And that's pretty cool. Um, I think that it has a lot to do with the fact that you can kind of set tools up on their side. So, you know, when I'm talking about that, I mean like this, where my T-handles are. This was three drawers and it became one. This was two drawers and it became one. So there's definitely space that could be made. You can't stand up certain things, like this drawer is kind of a mess, but like these tools can't really be stood up and fit in the, the drawers. I do wish that I had a cabinet of like deeper drawers that I could put some of those things in. So one day if I run out of tool storage, I'd like to get a rolling cabinet with some deeper drawers. Um, something that I could maybe dock under here. I was looking at doing a Sonic MSS Plus, and then I could roll that out in front of the car when I'm working on the car, and I could put some of the tools that I'm commonly using in there and give myself some space. But anyway, there will be more tool grid videos in the future. This one I think turned out pretty well. I appreciate you watching. Thank you, and have a great day.